Hey guys, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Adrian. Today we'll be talking about a very interesting article from the New York Times that came out last week where basically they they asked, you know, when were we the most innovative? So basically what they did was compare three different eras, 19 or 1870s, um, 1920, and then 1970, and then all the way to, to our time, which is 2016. Basically, they, they took a drop or, you know, like kind of like a, like a look into those eras to which, see which uh, inventions eventually became innovations that transformed society. So we think this is an interesting topic uh, simply, simply because of the fact that we've you know, talked about quite, quite about this before, um, but not in the sense of looking back. So this article gave us an opportunity to, to kind of like assess whether or not we are living in the golden age of invention right now. Um, so you looked at the article, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> well, it made me realize, because before I read it, I was like, oh, this is the, uh, I mean, all in all, it's a great uh, time to be alive with, uh, <laughs> with new inventions every day, <laughs> with uh, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and all that stuff. But really, it's just, and I think we already talked about it, it's just junk. It's yeah. junk. It's just just stupid things that might not work in five years, ten years. And and from like the 1870s to over here, there's been really few big inventions that actually changed the yeah. world, like airplanes and uh, electricity and what else? Medicine. Yeah. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> it's just a few things. I right before we started I, I, uh, the podcast, uh, when you said this is a big band podcast, I immediately thought <laughs> in the eighteen seventies, two cowboys in a in a shack, talking to themselves, doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's listening. What they're, are they talking they're, about? They're, right? just, they're just crazy talking to themselves. <laughs> What the hell are they talking about? Airplanes, man. Airplanes, flying yeah. machines. But it's interesting because what did they discuss back then? I'm like, like, like. I mean, and we were talking to, about this right, right before we we uh, we went on. Um, how, you know, the, you know, kind of like we kind of knew or seen pictures of you know back in time and stuff like that. Or we Maybe. heard, you know, we read about it. We seen stories and whatnot. But like, what this article kind of put right in our faces to acknowledge is that like god damn like these people didn't take baths in the 1870s like how, i mean there's a lot of stuff that we take for granted today <laughs> that they didn't have i mean you know not even thinking about technology just thinking about basic stuff like how do you clean your ass if you take a shit yeah <laughs> um <laughs> you know you know washing your hands because you know th they point out that back in the 1870s there were only like about 40 million people in the United States and the reason was because when somebody was born they didn't last a whole long time before they were dead yeah. because they were, were getting infected and whatnot and back then doctors were considered like witch doctors they weren't really doctors because the state of medicine really didn't exist as it does today and so people would die of infections and diseases all the time yeah. I mean <laughs> we take that shit for granted today because it's like now we're addicted to antibiotics, as you know, recent news point out. We're addicted to this stuff. Um, but back then it was like, God damn. And, and you know, I was, as, as I was reading it, I was like, God, like, I was just reflecting a lot on it. That, that's when I immediately I sent it to you. Like, we've got to talk about this stuff. Because, you know, we talk about technology all the time. You hear about technology in every freaking corner of the Internet. And most of this stuff, as you were saying, is just a bunch of crap. I mean... I was, I mean, it really made me reflect as to what exactly is the big deal in our age. I think, I think mostly, as you pointed out, from the 1970s to today, which is about 46 years, most of this stuff, like cars, they really haven't changed. I mean, self-driving cars, they probably will change a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, we're not there yet completely. We're just the beginning of it. But I think most of the things that we, we, we have from the 1970s to today is basically just like 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 efficiency stuff like incremental yeah, efficiency, stuff, stuff, yeah. efficiency stuff and we're you know with uh 
the internet, the mobile phone, um, the hyperloop, know, all this stuff. I mean, it's yeah, like all this stuff is just really like it invades our our lives and makes part of our lives more efficient, more convenient, all this stuff. And that's really the pitch of most of the stuff that comes out. It's not really like goddamn, like you're. Like, you know, imagine a bionic eye, you're like, you'll be able to see behind doors, <laughs> you know, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. That's kind of like the stuff that we're, we want to be able to, to, to see or, or have in our hands, like stuff like that, really crazy shit. But, you know, we're nowhere near about that. It's more like a sci-fi dream. I think since the internet, the, the next big invention is going to be the Hyperloop. Yeah. Because it's, it's a new thing. Transportation. It's like before the airplane, I mean, people do. They just wanted to fly with wings, <laughs> but someone invented a flying machine and oh, an airplane. Oh, okay, and then the car. Yeah. And uh, but now it's like you say, it's just uh, making things better, not inventing yeah. new things. But the hyperloop, I think, it's a new thing. And I, I has something like that been invented since the internet? Has something like mm, I mean that, that some, you something as 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 impactful? Yeah. No. All right. Not really. No, I mean there's stuff that's that's obviously come about, but it's not as people could say the the iPad or think, iPod, but yeah, but it's more like an entertainment. Yeah, thing. that's a media center. It's that's an, an MP3 it, player. And, and people see it as oh yeah, it's changed the world. Yeah, it's just giving us more shit to look at and, and waste time on. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the bottom line. I mean like like the question always comes up: does, Is the internet making us smarter? Does having access to all this stuff making us smarter? No, yeah. no. No, honestly, I mean, if you if you have criteria like us, to 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 not get you know caught up in the whole, um, you know, just entertainment loop of this thing, yeah, I mean, it's definitely I feel as though it's much smarter today than it was you know ten years ago. Yeah. Um, because of the freaking internet, but because I've made use of it, in, in, in to that degree, but I most people are not like that. They're just consuming shit. Want to be entertained? Yeah. Idiocracy. You gotta see the movie too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, which like if if you'd look back, let's look like let's kind of like look back again, and you know try to answer a question as to which was more important innovation: your know, birth control, vac vaccinations, running water, indoor plumbing, jet jet air travel, mobile phones, you know, you name it. Which which one do you think was more impactful to, you know, across the, across the board? I think all those are very. Are very I I I wouldn't want to choose one because. It makes you like anti something immediately, you know. <laughs> yeah. But birth control, I mean, they're trying to destroy the Planned Parenthood uh, centers. But uh, birth control, I think it's a necessity yeah. because eventually we're gonna run out of space, and then what we're gonna do? There's a, a few sci-fi movies that talk about that and how they're gonna stage things to kill people, and uh, I don't want that to happen, and. Uh, Vaccinations, vaccines, I mean, we're alive because of those. Um, cell phones, so it's just easier to, to communicate and not get lost and not die and all that stuff. <laughs> what else was it? Um, well, jet air travel, um, you know, running water, indoor plumbing, I mean, vaccination. It, all of it, all of it, it, it. It's very important for how we live right now. If you take any of those away right now, yeah, we're chaos. Fucking, we're fucking chaos. Yeah, <laughs> chaos. I mean, something that I would say the least uh, impactful would be the cell phone. Just being able to talk to anyone anywhere would be the least impactful, but still not. And it'd be chaos if you took cell phones away. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think um, like, I can't point to one either. I mean, I could easily say, like, running water, indoor plumbing, and waste control. Simply because, like, what the, like, what would we do with it? <laughs> that would be crazy. I mean, it's back to the barbarian age, yeah. <laughs> to for everybody. Yeah. I mean, seriously, like, like, I mean, disease all over the place. I mean, that. I mean, just from that, I would point to that, like penicillin. Um, I mean, across the board. But then there's the other things, kind of like uh, the ones that that have to do with, um, you know, education, like the printing press, uh, electricity. <laughs> Like what the fuck do we do with all electricity? <laughs> but all, I mean, all the, like, what do we do with that? Like well, last week, last remember last yeah. week I, I was without internet in my home for four days straight. I spent like one like half a day with you <laughs> to get internet. <laughs> then you know uh, the other days I had to go somewhere else to get internet. 
But, and I mean, I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you need it. This is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> this is ridiculous. But, you know, it's funny. Um, the other thing I, was, I wanted to say was that, you know, these things are, are, are context. In a context, we got we to gotta look at them in a context. Because um, to, to the point where we are today, we wouldn't be here without all the other things before. Um, and I, don't, I think a lot of people, you know, take that for granted. They don't, they don't think about that. <laughs> like think they think like right now is 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 being invented in in isolation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's like if you ask kids like, what's the most important thing you have? Well, a fucking iPhone or a fucking iPad. You know, <laughs> they don't ask about oh. So what keeps me alive every freaking day? <laughs> you know what I mean? My iPhone. Like how do like like why do we have all this food in the refrigerator, right? How did they do? Like it how did before? we get a refrigerator here? They think there's ice behind the freaking refrigerator. I mean, probably. I, I don't think they know how to how to even how work. How does it work? Yeah, and and the article <laughs> says that I remember the dates exactly, but people used to. I mean, the world used to run around uh, what people wanted to buy before they had refrigerators and after they had them because before they bought a lot of food that didn't um, go bad yeah. uh, really fast because yeah. I mean they didn't have yeah. refrigerators but after that after they had refrigerators they started buying other food that they didn't used to buy yeah. uh, mainly was it pork yeah. I think they, it, they, they ate a lot of pork, pork. back then uh, because they couldn't they couldn't have anything else because it, the, 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 the food would grow you know bad really really soon yeah <laughs> And uh, I mean, I, I, that's one of the keys. Yeah, that's you actually brought that one up. I didn't remember that, that one, but that was a, the one that really like, like, bing, like, God damn, these people only consume maybe five different foods. Yeah, <laughs> because they, they and what do we have today? Like we have all sorts of crap in our yeah, bodies. All sorts of crap. <laughs> Anything you want, you can buy and store in the refrigerator. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, but it's uh, to me what like excites me to a sense is how the world changed with one invention of the refrigerator. I mean, how yeah. how maybe farmers were like, oh, now people are going to buy our vegetables and store them in the refrigerator yeah, and everything. we're going to have more money. It exploded. Yeah, something exploded and something imploded. Like other people who yeah. used to sell certain stuff were like, oh, we're not selling as much as they, as these guys because of the stupid invention, the refrigerator and yeah. stuff like that. And it, it, you know, there's a, there's a, um, article that I read about two, two months ago about uh, the rise of uh, supermarkets. So this is like uh, pre-1970s, I'm guessing. Uh, basically, so the guy that invented the supermarkets or the, the, the town stores or the corner stores, uh, yeah, they kept stuff in there for people to buy. But when everything blew up was when the introduction of, of, of Freon, which is what keeps refrigerators as a refrigerator. So without Freon, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's the key. Freon was the key. Uh, and up until Freon was, was not invented, didn't exist, like it, nobody went to the freaking supermarket. I mean, people would go, but it would be like, like, what, like what the F, right? But as soon as Freon you know, came into the picture and it, it was the, that was the thing, the, the kind of like the, the last piece of the puzzle that needed to be connected for that thing to you know to to explode, and we take that for granted. <laughs> Did you hear about the the there was an incident at a Costco near here about the Freon thing? No. A guy punctured one of the the pipes with Freon and it uh, spilled, and they had to evacuate everyone. And two customers were taken to the hospital because it's toxic yeah that's true so it's, it's really crazy how you say it. without it we wouldn't be here yeah. but it's also very deadly it's, it's ridiculous man now do you do you, i mean are we are we in the goal now today you know like looking at what we have today and we kind of talked about this before in previous podcasts but the question is are we in the golden age of innovation right now i think a lot of people want you to think that but i don't think so it's, we're just making things better like it's a lot of incremental shit yeah with add-ons not like way better we, we don't have a uh like a way better car i think a lot of people say cars right now are worse when, than than the 1950s 60s when they were built to last and um i don't know i i kind of think we're just doing incremental stuff and it's really just a way to get more money out of us yeah i think that we are not 
we are not, I mean, I think not a, a very small per percentage of people g have an understanding and, and uh, you know, the, the awareness of where we stand as opposed to before and what's, what we have at our disposal to really be uh, more impactful. But I think we live too much in, a, in, a, in, a, in an age of marketing, <laughs> yeah. of too much marketing. And we're addicted to damn marketing, or people are addicted to damn marketing, and that creates a bad sense of what really is is important and what's not. Uh, why do I say this? Because the internet has brought a lot of benefits, but I don't think we've, you know, the the whole spectrum of people really understand what to do with it beyond just sending themselves emojis and shit through Facebook. And you could be yeah, like one of the key things about the internet is that compared to, to the past is that we have more access to people now. We have more access to, to knowledge, but I don't think people understand how to do both <laughs> because we've been trained to, to work like, like in a straight line. <laughs> um, and I think the, the moment we unlock that or we understand it, how to use it, and I've talked to this, about this before and like in, in talks people invited me to, to point out like the thing that we are wasting and I think that's that's the important part like the fact that you and I can talk to somebody in freaking Thailand or whatever and you know go up and launch something with some other people right across the world like ideals spread more faster um, you know it can be, be a more, more impactful more faster but but even that's still like a huge challenge um, but that's what I believe as to where we are right now <laughs> the main theme song for my movie was done by a EDM artist in Amsterdam <laughs> that wouldn't be possible without the internet that's true exactly that's true. Um, now when do you believe we were the most innovative you know compared those eras which one was the more impactful one? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's when we weren't thinking about making money with our innovations yes, and yes. making everything better just I mean I don't think the guys who invented the the, nope. the car or the the airplane were thinking about making money out of it. They just wanted to get people to other places faster, save time. Probably. I think I think like the like that saying that goes the necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. I think it was greater back then than it is today. Yeah, because right now uh, uh, we have shit handed out to us. <laughs> there's yeah, there's there's I think there's this exploitation that people. I mean, even EA Games is widely known for their download content, and they they make fun of them like, "Oh, make just make half a half a game, sell it as a full game, and then we'll release the the rest of it as download content." Yeah. And instead of paying sixty bucks for playing a game, you end up paying two hundred bucks for a game for a complete game, and and I think people are getting used to that, and there's a whole new generation that is used to that because it's the only thing that they know. And I think it's just about, it's not about making anything better. It's just about how can we make more money out of this? Can we just add one little thing and make it better and just yeah. get more money? So I, I don't think people are actually trying to make the human race better. They're just trying to make more money. Yeah. I mean, the simple fact that today the, the career path that anybody could take is become a salesman. <laughs> Why? Because you don't need a degree for that, right? I mean, we all sell, but, you know, we all do it to a certain degree. But the fact that more people just can say, oh, I don't want to study and just become a fucking salespeople, that tells you a lot to the state of where we are. Uh, why? Because there's more shit to sell and more and people are conditioned to expect like, salespeople to be calling you, to be, you know, poking your, your everything, you know, trying to sell you shit. And I think that's that's kind of like a, a, a clear sign of where we are as compared to the past. <laughs> a lot of stuff, yeah. you know, we're not talking about like, we're not really, by the way, we're not, people listening, we're not really taking a digger deep into this, obviously because it's a huge topic. But if we did, I mean, there's, you know, things that came about of the other inventions. Like today, uh, we talk about innovation as if it were a fucking, you know, like food, 
So, hey, yeah. let's innovate. <laughs> it's like it's like eating. Yeah, yeah let's right? innovate, man. You know, it's like if it were that damn easy. I mean, when are, when are you free to innovate? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, you know, and and that also created the the this whole cottage industry of in, a consult of consultants, which didn't exist before. I mean, who was consulting to Thomas Edison about electricity and all this other stuff? No one. No one. They were fucking colleagues. doing themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. Talk so. to colleagues. So, I mean, I, I've never, I don't know if you open a can of, of, of other things I'm going to say about this, but I'm, I'm really against life coaches. I'm really against yeah. everything <laughs> coaching-wise or consulting. If that, I mean, I would take consulting and I would pay consulting from Steven Spielberg or Raul Rodriguez or yeah. Michael Bay, someone like that. But if, if I'm not going to take consulting from someone who consults just because they consult. I mean... Yeah. And a lot of people do pay their services. A lot of people pay for life coaching. And I mean, yeah. you gotta be, if you're gonna life coach, you gotta be uh, an amazing motherfucker yeah. <laughs> to give life coaching. And if you are an I, amazing I, motherfucker. For me, to, for me to hire a life coach, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to one later today, not because I need one, but because he's supposedly one. Uh -huh. And I, I told him last week, like the group that, that we're putting together, I told him, well, this fucker actually needs to practice what he preaches. Because the way he's acting, he's not really acting as though he's a freaking life coach. <laughs> he ain't that awesome to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, and, and I've gotten into fights about this uh, with people, but if you're a life coach, <laughs> and if your life is that amazing, you wouldn't have time you, you to would, be coaching. No, and, or and charging. you wouldn't be calling yourself a life coach. People yeah. will come to you no matter yeah. fucking what. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's why you wouldn't I, be over there selling. Oh, I'm a freaking life coach. I can help you. You know, you're you're stress relief or whatever. I don't even know what the hell they, they no, do. I mean, it's just that. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's really stupid. Yeah, all those kinds of things. I mean, consult with someone who actually knows what they're doing, and they have like. A, uh, success cases yeah. and all that stuff not just someone who says he does it <laughs> yeah I mean like in my case like like they call me a consultant but I, I've never really said I'm a consultant you know whatever they want to think like when I started writing my, my, my blog um, eight years ago it wasn't to to get leads or or anything I just wanted like to put my brain somewhere an outlet an outlet that was it I mean for me that was it what it ended up becoming was this you know you know, whatever people call it, you know, consulting, uh, blog or whatever, that was kind of like an outcome from that. And still, my motivation is not to get leads. I just write for the fucking hell of it, just to, you know, release my, express myself, release my, you know, get my, my head straight, whatever you want to call it, but it's not a lead generator for me. I don't really consider it. And people go to you. Yeah. Now, last question, you know, which innovation will historians of the future remember? If, if From look, this era? Yeah, no, no. Well, if we look, I don't know, let's say 50, no, we're probably still alive by then. <laughs> well, let's look at, I don't know, 75, 100 years from now. I, mean, I know it's hard, but uh, let's imagine it's 100 years from now, and then other historians are going to look back and say, like, what's important? They're going to have be having the same freaking discussion like we are in a different medium, probably, um, and what's going to be comparing errors and what, what are they going to say is, the, you know, which era was more impactful. <laughs> I mean, from this era, the only thing I can say that was like big, like the airplane, would be the internet. That, that, that's, I think that's like the biggest thing from this era. But if you go back, well, yeah, it's going to be the airplane, it's going to be the internet, it's going to be the car, um, indoor plumbing, electricity. I mean, I think it's just a handful of things, telephone. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to, to look at the, at the basis for everything. So, I mean, if you say, I don't know, 100 years from now, they're probably going to be saying AI. <laughs> I mean, if, if AI is, is, gets to the full potential of what's talked about about AI, AI is going to be a big one. Um, but again, AI would not be possible but without like a hundred different things <laughs> or it could be that a hundred years someone's going to be talking they're doing their, their podcast and they're going to be talking <laughs> do you remember those idiots when they actually tried to make ai yeah and they actually thought it was going to work <laughs> oh yeah well, <laughs> we, well, didn't they think about finding aliens <laughs> <laughs> smarter than ai <laughs> right yeah i mean you never know man yeah, i mean well, maybe it's gonna they're out there hunting for aliens or whatever and <laughs> suddenly we 
figure out that Star Trek is actually possible, <laughs> and they're yeah. more advanced than we are, yeah. <laughs> then what? <laughs> AI is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, that guy stuck into to an alien with his co-host, an alien. <laughs> right, Bleep Blop? <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you never know. That's why I said, like, it's kind of hard to look forward because there's so many damn things to, to do. But um, but anyway, guys, like, let us know what you think. Um, tell us tell us what you think about the article. Did it make you think about, you know, kind of look take, take a look back in, in Kingston's perspective? Um, you know, what do you think is the big, you know, the, the, the most innovative era so far? And, uh, you know, just uh, let us know. So, Let us know. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.